All right, so welcome to module one. Now this is going to be, we're gonna ease you into the, the whole modeling process. So today we're gonna focus on data cleaning and exploration, just getting to know your data set basically. So the objectives today are just to introduce you to the end-to-end -end analysis, sort of an overview of the entire analysis process. Actually, it'd be a good idea for you to open up the uh, figure we shared with you in the Dropbox, or the GitHub, which is the, the decision tree. Just have that open all the time. I find that would be very helpful. And then we're going to learn the importance of having tidy data when performing statistical analysis. We're going to introduce you to some advanced data cleaning methods, and then we're going to perform some exploratory data analysis to identify patterns in variable relationships. This is an overview of the entire analysis process. As you can see, it's very involved, and there's a lot of different decisions that you'll have to make. But really, we just we're going to help you decide what analysis you want to do. And our overall goal is to provide you with the tools to make this decision. And I put a star there because obviously we can't address every issue that you'll come across and you're going to have to make some decisions on your own. But hopefully we'll provide you with a sort of a solid foundation to help you feel more confident going forward. Focus of today is this top section here. If we zoom in can see basically we're gonna start by reading in our data, performing some exploratory data analysis. And then this middle section here is going to be reserved for this afternoon. So really this morning, we're gonna go down this pathway of complete cases this morning, but afternoon we'll tackle those uh, missing values. Then we'll do some transformation of the data and then some introduction to feature engineering. And one thing we want to emphasize is that no matter how well versed with stats you are, you still have to take the time to sit down and get to know your data and understand what you're working with. The first concept I sort of want to highlight is uh, having your data in a tidy format. So that's the first thing you should do when you're reading your, your data set into R is that you want to make it tidy. This structure facilitates easy analysis, visualization, and modeling. And it also really works well with the vectorized nature of R. So the concept of tidy data is that each of the columns are different variables and each of the rows are different observations. And then each of the cells in your data frame are different values. So it'd be great. First thing you wanna do is, is make your data tidy. We also have the concept of data wrangling. And this is what we're going to be doing a lot of this morning. Basically it's just, joining different data sets together, correcting errors and typos, ensuring that your data are consistent if they come from different sources. For example, you might have different units if they come from different sources. So you just want to make sure everything's uh, sort of cohesive there. We can remove duplicates, uh, missing values, which again, we'll focus on this afternoon. And then we'll select variables of interest, ensure that we have the correct format of our data because R can be very picky when it comes to data classes, whether you have numerical or factor or whatever, we got to make sure that it, it's the correct class. And then you can even create new var variables if you need. So all of these things sort of uh, data wrangling, is what it's called. Then we're going to do some exploratory data analysis, which really we're going to sit down and understand the di different data types we have. We can detect patterns and associations in our data. We can check that our data meets certain assumptions. For example, if we require like normal distribution for the model we end up using. And this really helps inform your choice for the model you're gonna end up uh, using downstream. So we're gonna cover summary statistics, data visualization, outlier detection, and do some correlation analysis as well. So the first step in the sort of the exploratory data analysis is to make sure you, you really understand the type, the data type. And you can have numerical, for example, body mass or weight, which can take on sort of any value. You can have count data, the number of eggs or the number of hospital visits, sort of those discrete uh, count values. You can have binary values, 
For example, whether a species lives in the ocean or not, so sort of that zero one, or a disease status, whether a patient is healthy or they have a disease multi-categorical, where you have uh, different types of categories within, within your um, variable. For example, different tumor stages. And again, this is very important for the model you end up choosing down the road because it opens up the path for some models, but not, not others. And data visualization is sort of my favorite part because you can really get creative and it's important for identifying trends, patterns, and outliers and understanding your, how your data are distributed, the associations, and whether you actually need to transform your data. And I put some examples of plots on this slide. We have a box plot up here, and this one's very useful for identifying outliers. And then down here is sort of a, a grouped bar plot. So if you want to see the different categorical frequencies between different groups, for example. So there's a lot of different options um, that you can, that you can uh, create in R depending on, on the, the type of data that you have. Then one thing I always like to do is visualize the missingness in the data set because it really gives you an idea of, of what you're dealing with and what sort of your, your if imputation is something you should consider or, or if you have enough data to sort of go down that complete case route. And speaking of missing values, uh, the choice of using complete case versus imputation is very different. And it's, there's a lot of controversy about the use of imputation, but we'll give you sort of an introduction to how you can approach this uh, this afternoon. And lastly, we do a little bit of feature engineering, which is uh, applying some data transformations, creating new variables that better represent your data. And we might perform or you can perform a dimensionality reduction, such as a principal component analysis. And this one's useful because it allows you to transform a high dimensional data set into a smaller set of predictors that better explain the variation in your data. So you don't have to deal with as many variables in your model downstream. And it's also useful for visualizing patterns. And then all of these steps are just very helpful for reducing model complexity down the road so that you only keep sort of relevant uh, features in your model. So we're going to dive right into module one lab today because we have a lot to cover. 